administration officials that more and more, especially at that second National Security Council meeting today, there were discussions of potential U.S. military and diplomatic and other options to be taken down the road once they reach a conclusion point in this investigation. Senior officials telling us there are, quote, no absolutes in the investigation so far, but also another official saying, quote, everything points to the network of Osama bin Laden. So the administration building a case here, having its own internal deliberations, and the administration very encouraged by international outrage. The president himself spoke to a half dozen world leaders today. The NATO alliance said it considered this an, the attack on the United States to be an attack on the alliance. The president looking to build a broad international coalition, and administration officials saying he hopes to use that coalition not only to respond to these attacks yesterday here in the United States, but also to mount a broad, broader offensive against terrorism. To deliberate and deadly attacks, which were carried out yesterday against our country, were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. This will require our country to unite in steadfast determination and resolve. Freedom and democracy are under attack. Now, as the president made that case in public today, Judy, a remarkable disclosure by the White House. The White House saying on the record it believed both the White House, the mansion where the president lives, and Air Force One, the plane that carries him around the world, were potential targets in these attacks. Two reasons why. Number one, the White House saying it has credible information that the plane that crashed into the Pentagon actually was initially targeting the White House, and then at the last minute decided to change its target, veer off, and hit the Pentagon instead. Number two, we are told by sources that another operating theory is that that plane that crashed outside of Pittsburgh was taking a turn toward Washington, and some officials believe its target was Andrews Air Force Base, that the hijackers believed that President Bush would be rushing back to Washington, and that perhaps there was a plan to take that plane and crash it into Andrews Air Force Base just as Air Force One was returning. That administration, sources say, is why the president did not return directly to Washington and went to two military installations before ultimately returning aboard Air Force One to Andrews. Air Force Base with military fighter jets escorting him. Judy? Just chilling pieces of information coming out. Uh, Jamie McIntyre at the Pentagon, as we listen uh, to, uh, to John, and, and I know we want to ask you what the administration is finding out about all this. I guess my question is how much are they going to feel that they have to have before they decide to act? Well, that's one of the key questions. And of course, the impulse is to act quickly, to show that uh, the United States is uh, capable of, uh, of taking action right away. But of course, that's often not the smartest thing to do. Uh, so they're going to have to weigh the impulse to act quickly and have some uh, uh, military retaliation against the need to build a, a case and make sure that they know uh, who it is that they want to strike. There's two elements to this. One is uh, enough evidence of who's responsible. That's something the FBI is gathering now. And then you need enough intelligence to know where that uh, person or persons or organization or country uh, is and how the best way to strike them is. And all of that would seem to indicate that it's going to have to take a little time. And of course, at the D Pentagon today, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld said uh, that nobody should think uh, that the fight against terrorism is something that you can do quickly. It's going to take, he said, a long, sustained campaign. And, and John King, uh, when we talk about the element of time, how much time does the White House think it ha has before it has to make some sort of decision one way or another? Well, I would just echo what Jamie said. Remember what happened a few years back when the Clinton administration launched strikes against suspected camps of Osama bin Laden. If indeed the bin Laden network is responsible for these attacks in the United States this week, one could make the case those Clinton administration attacks didn't do much, did they? This president not only wants first we're told to have conclusive evidence in the investigation but very much wants to build international support not only just among predictable US allies like the United like the United Kingdom France and Germany two conversations with the Russian president Mr. Bush had today a conversation with the Chinese president Jiang Zemin we're told the president hoping not only to respond both militarily and economically to these attacks but also to try to use this to build momentum to build some good thing out of this tragedy momentum for a broader international effort to combat not only terrorists, but the nations that harbor them and support them financially. All right, John King reporting from the White House, Jamie McIntyre from the Pentagon.
Joining us now here in Washington, Bill Bennett, a leading figure in the conservative movement in this country, former education secretary, former drug czar and two different administrations. Uh, Bill Bennett, what is the now with Empower America, what is the right thing now for the United States to do? Well, I think we have a, a moment of moral clarity uh, right now in America, Judy. Um, there is good and evil in the world. Uh, there is right and there is wrong. And I think everyone apprehends that, no matter what their politics, uh, where they are ideologically. And now building on that moment of moral, moral clarity, I think we need to act. Uh, we issued a statement today at Empower America, Jack Kemp and Gene Kirkpatrick and I, saying that uh, Congress should declare war uh, against uh, militant, militant Islam uh, and that uh, the United States should proceed as if in, as if in war because it is in war, well, uh, to hunt mean? down these folks. But, but what does that mean? These people that are means, scattered all over the globe, presumably. Well, believe me, the United States can find a lot of them if we set our mind to it. I, was, I had some access to intelligence information when I was director of drug policy. You can yeah. know and find out an awful lot, and we already do know an, a lot, an awful lot. But it means a couple things. It means we need to be willing to kill some people people who are leaders of these movements, if it is indeed these people who are responsible. And we need to explain to the American people that that's what it's going to take. I think they're with us. The second thing is we need to persevere, because if we get as tough as we should get, we may see more attacks on the United States. It's a big country. It's a free country. It's an open country. And even with restrictions that we're going to see, uh, you will never seal the borders of this country. We know that from discussions of the let drug me, war. Let me just ask you, Bill Bennett, are you saying the United States should act before it has all the details that one would normally expect to have to make a legal case against someone or some group? Well, it's not a matter of a legal case, Judy. Uh, we're not in a court of law. The, the President Roosevelt didn't say to, to Japan that he was going to bring it to justice. He said he was going to bring Japan to its knees. Uh, there's always more information to get. There are always more details to get. If you're, the question is, do we wait until we have all the information? No, because you never get all the information. When you have enough, when you have beyond a reasonable doubt, one might say, borrowing from the law, uh, a grasp or understanding of who's responsible, then you act. I don't think this is rocket science, by the way, and I think our intelligence people probably already know who's responsible for this. So do you have a timeline here in your mind? The, the time matters less to me than that it be done well and that it be done um, without equivocation, that it be done with overwhelming force and that, we're, that we understand that we're in this for the long run. I was checking my time frame, World War II, uh, people may not realize it was 55 days before we got to the Marshall Islands after Pearl Harbor and 101 days after uh, uh, until we got to Tokyo. That may seem, 55 days may seem like a long time after this one. I don't think we need to wait that long, not nearly that long. But uh, when we do it, uh, we should do it right, uh, and we should make it clear uh, that we're in this fight for the long run. This requires, if I could just say, not only something of our leaders, and I think our leader has passed his first great test. I happen to know there was a lot of pressure on George Bush to stay away last night. And we heard these reports on CNN. You mean to uh, stay away from Washington, Washington from the White House? Because of these threats. Uh, but I understand from all the information I have is that he was the one who insisted on coming back. So score one for our leader. He's showing the courage. Now the American people are going to have to be prepared to show some courage, too. They're going to have to put up with some inconveniences. But they're also going to have to put up with spending more money on defense, uh, with making sure we're in this for the long run, and with whatever else it may take. This is obviously a serious and well-prepared enemy that could strike at the heart of America like this. This is not any uh, pushover operation. But just to be clear again, Bill Bennett, uh, are you saying, uh, I mean, is there a threshold at all which uh, should be met before the United States, of information before the United States moves to retaliate? Yeah, there should be a threshold. We should be pretty confident that we're getting, that we're getting the right people people. And I don't think that's going to be hard to meet. Somewhere beyond, uh, between preponderance of the evidence and beyond a reasonable doubt. And the track record of a lot of these uh, militant Islam organizations are such uh, that they can give us confidence. Notice what everybody else is saying, too, Judy. Everybody, every Democrat, every Republican, and I think we should hold them to it. That it's not just these individuals and groups, but it's these nations, these states that sponsor or support. That could be a lot of people. That could be Syria, that could be uh, Libya, that could be Lebanon, that could be Iraq and Iran, it could be China. And if innocent and I, people are hurt? Uh, 
innocent people are hurt in war, uh, this country can uh, select its targets and exercise, as we saw in the Gulf War, with incredible precision. But there are no doubt that innocent people will be hurt. But a ton of innocent people were hurt yesterday. They provoked it. They have asked for it. They should get it. All right. Bill Bennett with Empower America, former Education Secretary. We thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to see you. We appreciate it. And we just want to let you know, I've just been told that uh, over at the Capitol, which uh, you can see behind me, preparations are underway now for a prayer vigil, which uh, should be getting underway in just a few minutes. When it does get underway, we will take you there live, but we want to show you some of the people. Uh, Senator John Kerry, of course, Democrat of Massachusetts. We just saw Senator Ted Kennedy passing in front of the camera. Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania. This looks like a pretty broad cross-section of uh, familiar faces in the Congress, both in the House. Uh, that's George Miller on the right from the state of California, Congressman Miller. We see Pat Leahy of Vermont, uh, Teddy Kennedy there on the left. We see uh, a number of members. That's uh, Republican Senator Olympia Snow of the state of Maine, uh, Jim Inhofe, Senator from uh, Oklahoma, and a few other a few others we uh, we see, and no doubt uh, there will be uh, a large turnout by members of Congress and others uh, as this prayer service gets underway just outside the United States Capitol. Now we want to go across the Atlantic Ocean to London to our chief international correspondent, Christian Amanpour, who's been taking a look today, Christian, at the reaction of people around the world to what's been happening here in the United States. Judy, even this side of the Atlantic, they're calling it a declaration of war. The newspapers in England and across Europe have been blaring headlines today. Even the normally careful and sedate broadsheets have all got unmistakable commentary. Assault on America, doomsday America, as I say, declaration of war. This is being taken incredibly seriously, as you can imagine here. Uh, commentators have been talking about it for the last two days, and leaders have been stepping up one by one across Europe and indeed across the world, to offer sympathy, solidarity, and support. There have been national security meetings in virtually every European capital, in Russia and in other places around the world. And there have been very practical t steps taken, for instance, by NATO. Uh, 19 NATO uh, representatives today in Brussels, in Belgium, their headquarters, uh, invoked uh, a Cold War era treaty in which, essentially, an attack on one member is an attack on all members. And all members are therefore committed to a mutual defense. They have said that this now they have taken. And if the United States decides that it wants to and needs to uh, take action, then NATO is at its disposal to help in that, in that situation. Uh, apart from that, on a human level, there have been many, many people across Europe who've simply come to U.S. embassies, who've put flowers, sometimes even soft toys, who have left messages. Uh, flags have been flying at half-staff at government buildings, certainly in Britain and in other parts. Uh, of Europe and around the world. Uh, there have also been uh, many messages of support from uh, Arab countries, particularly the American uh, Arab allies. Uh, they have condemned this act of terrorism. And also the uh, 57 nations of the Organization of the Islamic Conference condemn this, saying that this is against Islam. There have been incidences which have quote, sickened some people who've been watching, and those are the celebrations. Very few of these, we must stress, uh, in some parts of the world, notably in refugee camps, in uh, the Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon and other parts where people have been celebrating this. Also in Iraq, which, as you know, is still in a state of low-level war with the United States, there have been uh, support for this terrorist attack. This is not just the single greatest attack on the United States uh, since World War II, but the single biggest act of terror anywhere in recorded memory. And that is really being felt and a profound sense of confidence has been shaken, uh, a sense of insecurity is settling down. And people in Britain who, who I've been talking to say that, look, you know, of a certain generation, we grew up with the Blitz. We know what it is to be bombed, to see destroyed buildings. But when we saw what happened in New York, we felt sick. We've never felt like this before. Christian, uh, I want to touch on something. Uh, I was just interviewing Bill Bennett, who's been a very much a leader in the conservative movement in this country, former cabinet secretary. He and others are calling uh, for a striking back and striking hard 
Uh, there were a number of uh, columns in America's newspapers today calling in the administration not to hold back, not to wait. Based on, the, on what you know, the people you've been talking with, uh, whether in London or elsewhere, what do you think the support would be if the United States decided to move if quickly uh, before all the facts were in, uh, what do you think the reaction would be? 